15 minutes quick. Take it away. Thank you very much. And just to make sure everyone's in the right room, I'm going to talk about uh, the Lightning Talk knowing is half the battle. It's about how to build a lightweight internal security audit that you can work with your technical teams to help identify, prioritize, and remediate some of the known issues in your organizations. If I slip up, we did this at Proofpoint, and if I slip up and mention Project Steno, it's just our code name for what this was. During the project, we did it with 24 technical teams at Proofpoint, including all the engineering teams, uh, our CIT department, and our operations department. Out of that, there were about 30 meetings. So when I said lightweight earlier, it meant lightweight for them. For the person running it, like I was running it at Proofpoint, it's not as lightweight, but it has a great return on investment, so I highly recommend doing it within your own organizations. One of the things you also get to do with this is build a stronger relationship with your legal teams. And when you do that, they ask for certain things to be put in slides. So I, this is the only legal disclaimer in the slide deck, I promise. But I just wanted to make sure everyone knew this is just a generic overview of it. I can't give any of the specific data about what we found during our process, but it'll give you all, all the steps you need in order to replicate this in your own organizations. So that being said, why would you want to do this in your organization? First, you want to identify and remediate known issues. Two words are very important here. First, known. You don't want to make this heavyweight for your teams. So this isn't about doing code reviews, doing architectural reviews, going through and doing additional testing. It's really collecting the people together that have been involved in the product and saying, what do you know about? What are the skeletons in the closet? The, the institutional knowledge that really the group knows about. And then risks uh, can be anything. They could be in code. They could be in the processes that the team uses to do development or to deploy. They could be in some of the functionality, anything that is risky to the company. So whether it's security vulnerabilities, whether it is risky of how we treat customer data, all of that can be included in the program. Next, you want to raise awareness within your organization. This really helps to make security top of mind for everyone. It brings up the importance of security for the organization. And you can also use the carrot of saying, if we go through this and it's successful, we don't have to do another one of these next year. Because you'll learn how to identify these security risks. You'll learn how to mitigate them during development instead of after development. It also helps to increase the uh, visibility to leaders within your organization. This helps set the tone for these audits uh, because leaders will be behind it. They'll tell their teams how important security is to the organization and really be a champion for you to get the rest of the team working on the same page. Next, it educates your coworkers, again, to avoid another one of these audits. You can teach them about common threats. You can use these meetings to teach them about common threats. You can talk about attack surfaces and how to identify them. And then you can dispel misconceptions, things like, well, I can harden all my external services and then I'm safe, right? Well, no, internal APIs need to be hardened just as much because if someone gets a breach into one small piece, if the internal area is all soft and easy to get around, then that's going to open up a much wider attack surface for any bad guy that gets in. You can also help teach them about who is responsible for security. Some developers think, well, security is the job of SecOps. They add security at the end when I'm ready to deploy. It's not how it works. We can't add security to products. They have to do it from the beginning. And finally, you can improve the security posture of your company overall. One of the things we were able to do is identify common gaps that hit every team in the organization. Things like authentication, uh, like data classifications that most of the teams didn't know about and could then therefore give the security team a roadmap of, okay, if we develop guidelines for, let's say, how to do good authentication and give you a sample library, then you have one set of authentication code to audit and control instead of each team reinventing their own authentication and having 20 different authentication methods, each need to be code reviewed, secured, etc. And this also forces prioritization, sorry, forces prioritization of remediation for the items found. Now they're known, they're documented, the engineering or uh, operations leadership can take these back, prioritize them, and fit them into quarters to get them fixed. They'll have the best idea of uh, business decisions needed on when something has to be fixed. So it's not the, op uh, the security team saying, you must fix all these by the next quarter. Obviously, that doesn't work in the real world. So next, how do you do one of these programs on your own? First, uh, you have to engage your legal department if you have one. Uh, this is really important if you're a public company, for example. 
There'll be sensitivity to issues found. Some companies have public disclosure requirements, so if an issue is found, you have a legal obligation through contract or through compliance rules that you have to tell publicly announce that these issues exist or tell the customers that are impacted by it. So you want to have the legal time, legal team involved from the start instead of one one of these issues occurs, so that they're ready to handle it, and they can also protect the company with uh, client pr client attorney privileges, so that the information that is found is kept protected. And even after this goes through, keep aligned with your legal team because it's going to be important for them to be aware as things get remediated and can be removed from their risk management uh, program. Next, get buy-in from your technical leadership. Uh, as I said earlier, it demonstrates the importance of security in the organization. It'll set the tone. They'll be able to tell their team that this, we're taking this seriously. We're going to go through this process. We're going to fix the issues as they come up, etc. It's really important to have this because it'll come in later when you get into remediation. And as quarters go by, you'll notice that remediation may tend to wane if not everyone's bought into the process. Next, you want to find a technical leader in each of the teams. This is going to be the person who's going to be the centerpiece, if you will, of the meetings that you arrange. Uh, pay particular attention to finding individuals that have the institutional knowledge you're looking for. You don't want to, for example, take someone who's been with the company three months, is just getting trained up in the product. They're not going to be a big help for you. You also want to include managers in the teams so they can hear firsthand some of the issues that the team knows about. But at the same time, you don't want them to lead the meetings, and I'll go into that in a little bit, because that could be a distraction, or they may try to close down people's free exchange of ideas. Next, and this is probably advice you'll get from your own legal team, use a restricted templated documentation document repo. So for us, we used a wiki page that was restricted just to the people who are participating in the exercise. That way, uh, A, information doesn't spread where you don't want it to spread. And B, it's all centralized in one location instead of everyone, every team having their own little repo of their security issues. This helps out with enterprise risk management for your legal team as well as helping the leadership uh, prioritize all of these things if they can find them all in one place. Next, when the meetings do start, describe the purpose. Be honest with them and transparent. We're doing this as a one-time thing. We don't want to make it too heavyweight, so we're just looking for what do you know about Tell us about it. There's no harm in this. You're not going to get in trouble for saying, oh, I know about this security thing. I never brought it up before. It's a, it's a way to get things out on the table so we can start to work on fixing them. You should also encourage participation. Don't uh, question any ideas. Don't say, no, that's not a security issue. Don't worry about that, that kind of thing. Don't shut people down, basically. And if things get quiet in the room, start to ask questions to uh, encourage discussion among the folks. Uh, I'll have a list of questions in the slide deck uh, that I'll share. I'll put it on the screen, but I'm not going to read it, and I don't want you to have to worry about writing it down. Happy to share the slides. I'll give my contact info at the end. After the meeting is done, and you've collected all the information, and I'll go over the information you'll collect, have the security team in your group uh, review all of the documentation that was collected. The reason you want to do this is you want to have some sanity uh, on the security severities that people pick so that it's, it's a consolidated view across all of the teams and consistent with everything so that when it comes time to prioritize, prioritize the projects, a high in one group is not what would be considered a low in another group. It wants to be, you want it to have the same prioritization across, sorry, the same severities across all of them. Next, you'll want to prioritize the remediation with the leadership. Meet with the engineering leaders, the CIT, the ops leaders, and say, here's what the team found, answer any questions they have about the items, because they're not going to be experts in uh, all of the security issues. They're not going to be experts in all the products that their teams develop. You have to help them through this process, explain to them why this is important, why a cross-site scripting might not be important here, but is here because of the different access of, to information that's available. So just work with the leadership to get these prioritized and then task each of the team leads with working on remediation against those priorities. Just a simple process of creating tickets in their own ticket system. So don't use a separate ticket system. Don't use a separate Excel spreadsheet. Don't use a separate wiki to track it. Give them tickets in their own ticketing system so that they can go to the place they're used to go to to develop and fix these issues. Next up, and this is really important, is to review the progress that each quarter with the executive team or the leadership team, depending on your organization, 
For us, we do it with our executive team. We have the BU leads for each of the business units that are creating products, as well as the CEO, the CFO, uh, legal, of course, all have a seat at the table to see how are we progressing, how do we think we'll do the next quarter, and try to set a, a goal for remediating, let's say, all of the highs and criticals within two, three quarters, depending on the size of them. Thanks. And finally, this is a, sort of a never-ending process. You don't want to have to repeat it from the same team. But you'll have new teams come aboard. You'll have acquisitions within your company. And it's a great opportunity to do this over again with those new teams and acquisitions. One of the things you'll find if you're involved with acquisitions is during due diligence right before the acquisition, the, the company being acquired may not be as forthcoming with security issues, obviously, because they want to put on the best face to be acquired. But they'll open up and be honest with you after the acquisition. That's when you can really collect some good information. So we've been through this process now, uh, and I wanted to share some lessons that we learned from it in case they're helpful to you so you don't fall for the same pitfalls we did. First, there are two shortcuts that teams tried to do, and these didn't. the problem with these shortcuts are you don't have the collaboration. You lose that ability to talk through the team, to teach the team, uh, to uh, hear everyone from the team. So two of the things that teams did is some teams said, oh, yeah, I got the wiki template. We'll just fill it out, and we'll just run, read through it during the meeting. So it just became a read-through more for the security team's benefit, but we don't need that read-through as much. We want to try to encourage you guys to think about the issues. And then one uh, manager decided, I'm just going to collect the information via email. So I'll send out, here's the template. Tell me, send me email with all the things you guys know about, and I'll fill in the template. That, again, didn't work very well. It wasn't a sharing of ideas. It wasn't collaboration of uh, people talking to each other about the issues. Next up is maintaining control of the meetings. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier, invite the managers, but be wary. There was cases where a manager would say, that's not important. We don't need to worry about that right now. And it shut, shut down that person. And they weren't as vocal as they could have been. So definitely have the managers, because they, they're going to be surprised about some of the things they heard. And but either talk to them ahead of time or as they start to uh, try, try to take control of the meeting, say, thanks, but let's hear from what he has to say. Let's uh, consider all ideas. Make sure you get the right people invited, the people with the institutional knowledge, uh, not just one or two, but as much of the team that they can spare at the time. Um, and make sure it's people who have been around long enough to know how the products work and what some of the security issues might be. Another thing is when you're doing this, work on screen. So have the screen projected or some other way so everyone can see what the scribe is doing. So as you're filling out the wiki, you'll elect a scribe to say, okay, the issue is we have cross-site scripting in the admin UI on this page. You want to make sure that the scribe is collecting the information correctly from the person giving the information. So having it on screen so that the person can see it and knows what was said will help later when we go to prioritization. Finally, follow up. Um, those quarterly uh, results, uh, sorry, quarterly reviews that we give with executives, it's best to have a template so everyone's looking at the same sort of metrics for how they're doing. So for our template, for example, it's what were the accomplishments of the past quarter, what are the goals for the next quarter, and what's the forecast for the remaining is high and critical issues for follow-on quarters. That way everyone has the same sets of slides and it's quickly, quickly and easily absorbable by the audience. Keep the pressure on. Uh, we saw this after two or three quarters. People said, well, we have these other things that have come up. We don't know that we really want to work on these now. It's fine to reprioritize, but make sure they just don't go by the wayside and go to the backlog and never be seen again. And finally, uh, evangelize solutions to the common items. I mentioned we had teams that had the same sort of common items, things like authentication, like data classification. When you take those back to the security team and develop solutions that work for the, all the technical groups, Go back to these teams that had these issues and tell them about the solution. Don't just publish a process or a new guideline on the wiki page, but talk about it with them. That way they can take their take those uh, guidelines back and start to apply them to their products again, as opposed to just publishing a wiki article and they never go look at it, they never go find it, and they never go fix the issue. So as promised, there's a lot of example questions you can ask about. Is there insufficient or insecure logging? Are you logging passwords? Do you have lack of encryption of data rest, et cetera? Don't worry about all these. I'll give everyone who wants them the slides, but there's a lot of questions you can ask. A lot of them tied to the OWASP top 10. And then there's the issues that you will collect in the wiki. You can alter this to fit your teams. But some of the things we collected, a short title, so we have an identifier for an issue. 
a description of it that's readable by a leader, whether it's an executive or by a manager or a VP in a group, so they know what the issue is. Uh, if you use too much jargon or too much internal information, they may not understand it. The potential risk aspect, what can happen. Uh, the risk velocity, this is important for prioritization. How quickly could it happen? I mean, do we have an issue that, okay, if someone found out about it, it would take them six months to write an exploit and we have six months to fix it kind of thing. Um, what's the likelihood it would happen? What's the classification? Again, reviewed by the security teams, so they're all consistent. And then an owner, a level of effort, again, for prioritization, which we use t-shirt sizing. Is this a small, medium, or large effort? Uh, a story reference to their own bug tracking system. And finally, a planned remediation or completion date. And with that, here's my contact info. If you'd like a copy of the slides, ProofPoint's always hiring. So if you're interested, there's our hiring website. And I'll take questions. Sure. A uh, couple of questions, actually. First one is just, did you see the presentation on the Dojo this morning? I unfortunately did not. I had a conflicting one. Because that actually seems like something that would be really good for handling the finding side of this and sort of organizing yep, I, those. And when I saw the talk, I went and looked at the software on GitHub because I knew I couldn't make the talk. And you're absolutely right. Giving that visibility and sharing that visibility with everyone throughout the engineering team, through the management, with something like that that gives you tracking for those issues and remediation is good. Yeah. I think the other thing is just similar to the whole audit thing, we find that when we bring in automated tools like uh, static scanning and so on, we get an absolute flood of findings from that as well. Yeah. Do you think that this process would work for that sort of thing as well? Yeah, it definitely. So one of the common findings we had, um, and again, I'm not supposed to talk about specifics, but was uh, how to improve our build system. So we have multiple acquisitions at ProofPoint. They all come in initially with their own build systems, their own development, CICD pipelines, getting them over to our main CICD environment, which has security tests in the build system that does fuzzy logic tests and all these other tests. Getting them involved with those is one of the common findings. So one of the things that we did is we're writing documentation of, hi, welcome aboard, welcome to ProofPoint. Here's how you integrate your build system into ours so you can take advantage of these security items, these security tests. But then, again, going back to your first question, having those, whether it's from pen tests, whether it's from uh, that automated testing, whether it's from bug bounties, all feeding into that single pane of glass of measuring your security posture is perfect. Any other questions? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah.